Hey guys, welcome back to uh, Super Moist here. So uh, we're trying to put uh, a compilation together of um, of uh, joining the roof of Africa and you know, what you need to do and what uh, my perception is of, of what we need to do and how to enter and so forth, as we said. So I'm not going to hop on too much about that. But <clears throat> okay, so the first thing that I think that's crucial, I've been mean, thinking about it and obviously the first thing crucial, even for myself, is to actually decide <clears throat> what class you're going to ride. So I think that's your first uh, sort of like target because at the end of the day, you know, when you when you enter the roof of Africa, you're going to have to click on there. I want to do gold, silver, bronze and iron. So, you know, and, and, and I've been thinking about it because um, uh, myself, because at the end of the day, I need to decide if I'm going to ride or if I'm going to race. So I had this um, accident with my finger. I broke my finger. And um, yeah, so you can see it's still healing and all the rest. And a lot of people know about this and I'm not going to go into that. But so, you know, I'm sort of sort of saying, OK, well, am I going to ride bronze? Am I going to race bronze? Am I going to uh ride iron or or, or or race iron so i traditionally race iron um you know and I've, I've said that before but this year you know with my hand i'm a bit worried i rode mp and i did feel the toll and and it did bug me uh, um, i don't have the mobility i'm gonna see you know physios and whatnot and and see if i can get this finger sorted out and fixed but i'm sort of concerned so i need to make a decision and so do you so how do I get to that decision? Okay, so first and foremost, I need to look at my type of riding. At, at, what riding can I do? So, um, and this is a very tricky subject because I'm not going to, I can't say to you, listen, ride bronze, ride gold, ride silver, because then if you don't make it or if you if you can't make it through it, then then it becomes my fault. So, So you need to be honest with yourself and you need to look at, uh, you're, you're capable of riding. Look at your friends around you that you ride. But I think most of all, what what helped me and, and originally, I always said to my friends. I mean, you know, I've got um, uh, uh, Neil Curtis, Michael Muller. You know, um, I've um, I've pitted for Errol, uh, Errol Zeki and I've pitted for um, I put uh, I put and helped them um, uh, Lloyd Wild. So I've been going to the roof. For, for many years but I never wanted to race because I just felt that I was just never good enough and in, in a way and I still feel that way now I'm 53 years old I started doing the roof and all the rest when I was 50 which I mean was stupid but uh, but nevertheless I'm doing it so so I always felt that I was never good enough and it was obviously riding with the riders that I was riding with so you know, a few years back, the guys were saying, but, you know, we don't understand why you not entering these things. And I was like, no, I, I'm just not good enough. So uh, my friends just like sort of convinced me that to try. And I think um, that's like, uh, like a key word, you know, your friends are going to say, um, try the roof of Africa. Now you need to decide between your friends, are they pulling you into <laughs> the fire with them because <laughs> they don't want to battle alone. They don't want to struggle alone. Or are they being generously honest and saying, listen, you know, I think you, you're there. Obviously, people who have done the roof of Africa or these races or these events are going to be good people to get honest opinions from. But again, honest is, is the word because some people and some friends, you want to call them friends out there, you know, they maybe set you up to fail. So, you know, I don't know what your friends are like, but anyway, just just consider that, you know, I'm not being horrible, I'm not being facetious, just just consider that. So, you know, speak to the guys and, 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 and try and get honest perceptions of, of um, where is your writing, you know, what am I capable of and, and, and what do you think? And from there, you know, I sort of, sort of said, okay, well, then I committed and I, I, I started this journey to the roof of Africa, and this is what we're talking about. So where I started was in, in, in Joburg, we've got a couple of events and so forth, and be barred like the, you know, the WXCs and all the races or not, I didn't want to get involved in that because I just don't want to get involved in that, put it that way. So I started off with the lower stuff, um, you know, uh, medallas and, and, and sort of thing like that, riding, um, riding GPSs, 
uh, you know, seeing the blue loop and riding the blue loop and, and then riding the red loop and then actually seeing how many loops I could do. So, um, you know, and, and see exactly where am I, you know, where am I this whole equation, riding with people and, 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 and following the GPS and riding those areas, but sort of semi racing them if you want to, um, say it that way so i think these events these these uh, iron horses you know medallas um you know are, are the stepping stones for you to concept if this is going to be your style or not there might be some other ones out there and if i haven't mentioned you i apologize but these are the ones that i uh, i know of and, and and more out there in my face type of thing every day so that's why i mentioned them and then from there <clears throat> I then did a proper race, okay? And the proper race that I decided to do in was MP, MP Bronze. So uh, the first race I actually properly entered was uh, MP Bronze, and I did uh, hard, MP Hard Bronze, uh, because there was a dabbler and there was the original, and the MP Hard was, you know, the, the hardest one of the series that they had back in the time. And I did an MP, and I tried that, and I absolutely fell in love with it, um, because... The, from the from the riding point of view, uh, you know, it was um, I just I just fell in love with it. I, I can't explain it to you. Um, you know, when you're riding with your friends and so forth, you're riding, and there's there's always people better than you. But when I was racing, I was absolutely racing MP. I was racing absolutely by myself, and there were hundreds of people better than me. But I didn't feel that way. I just. I got into my zone, I got into my pace, you know, I was nervous, I was shaking, I was terrified, you know, and 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 I went through that and I went through that emotion and, and I tried it and I, and I loved it. I think the first MP race I did, I think I came 120th or 126 or something like that. Um, I'm actually looking up on my posters here. <laughs> uh, it's, not, it's not written down. So I didn't care. To me, it was about doing the race, doing it by myself, uh, following the GPS, following that race format, being there on, on time, you know, getting through the start gate, getting through the jitters, and, and, and I did it that way. And and I fell in love with it. I, I, I really did. So by the time I did uh, Roof of Africa, my first Roof of Africa, I had um, uh, two, uh, three MPs under my, under my belt. I did a dabbler, then I did the hard enduro, then I did the original. And at the original, when I did the MP original, um, I, 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 I actually got into this race pace. And, and the reason why I got into this race pace was because my radiators, my radiator blew. Um, I, I, um, I had a bad fall and I, I punctured my radiator hose and um, I, I, my radiator just started leaking. So I, I limped into the DSP and I thought, that's it, my race is done. Um, I came into the DSP at the position, uh, I think 60, uh, P60, and then um, and I thought that was it. My 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 race is done on on the on the last day. So um, KTM Durban, um, great guys. They uh, the the organizer said, but why don't you speak to KTM Durban? KTM Durban sorted out my bike. They, they fixed my bike. Uh, when I left the DSP, I was uh, positioned 100 and, 150 or something stupid like that. And I got onto the, onto the road and I started um, racing. And why I mentioned this particular race, because it actually clicked for me. Um, I never used to go that fast. And that race, I, I literally raced it because I was trying to catch up to my friends that we were riding with or racing with. And I was constantly having them in my, in my like sort of target. So just passing people and non stopping and not taking a break and just, and just actually racing. So that was a big click for me. Um, and, um, and then it was a, a MP uh, Enduro, the, the original. So by the time I came, and by the way, I, I think I came like three or four places behind, <laughs> behind my mates. So I really did catch up and I, and I looked at it and I was like, Wow. Okay. So that's what it's about. And it just, uh, you know, ignited this thing in me. And I had still at this point in time had no intentions of riding the roof. I really had no intention of riding the roof. But then I sat there and I was speaking to my wife and I was like, you know what? I've done all the MPs. I've done the medallas. You know, 
I'd like to give the roof of Africa a go. So I, um, you know, spoke to my friends and all my friends were like, oh no, you know, do bronze, do bronze, do bronze, do bronze. And I was still nervous and I said, no, you know, um, no, I'm not going to attend bronze. I'm going to do iron. You know, insecurities, call it whatever you want, but it was a reality for me. It was my decision. And, you know, everybody still, you know, gives me shit about it, but I, I, I did, I did iron. So, uh, uh, and I did iron and out of my surprise, you know, I came eighth. I came eighth in iron and, it, and, I was, and I was shot, but I raced, you know, I really, really, I really raced and I thought that I was ready for the, for the race, you know, because I mean, all these impies and these medallas in between and riding every weekend and, and I thought, okay, cool. So, long story short, you know, this question falls on to you. You know, this, this question falls on to you. Uh, speak to your friends, um, see uh, people that have done the roof of Africa, they've done bronze, they've done iron, they've done gold, they've done silver, whatever the case is, ride with these type of people and then get an honest opinion from somebody that they, they say, no, but listen, but I think you capable of doing, you know, the roof of Africa and, you know, and then say, well, you know, you know, you, you're capable of doing silver and you sort of go, oh, I'm not too quite sure, and enter bronze, you know what I mean, and uh, uh, that type of vibe, you know. Um, keeping in mind that what I'm saying is for all these, like, newcomers and, like, people that have been phoning me and WhatsApping me and emailing me, you know, trying to get some some info out of this. So, and then from there, you know, you need to make a decision as to what class you're going to ride. I really can't tell you. I don't know your your um, you know your riding levels. Um, speak to your mates. Look around you. See guys that have ridden bronze. Guys that have ridden silver. Um, I wouldn't speak about silver and gold because the guys are riding silver and gold. Seriously, you guys know that you're riding silver and gold. So so pick your class and and see the guys around you. The guy says, well, you know, I finished roof last year, which roof last year was quite tough because of the heat. Uh, uh, it was extremely hot and and the route was tough. So the guys finished last year bronze and you keep up to him, no problem. You got your answer. You know that type of vibe. But he might also not be at the place where he was. So, so you know, you need to weigh this out. You know, you need to really, really weigh it out. So I can't answer that for you, but just check your writing. And then from there, also remember that we've got. I mean, we're in July now. Um, no, July. <laughs> in June, July. Oh, what are we in? Eh? Anyway, we got a couple of months. So we got months now to um, pick a class and then start training for that class. Okay, so training, riding, you know, every weekend, you, you need to ride. You know what I mean? Don't don't kid yourself, you need to ride. Um, you know, um, also, uh, I would I'd suggest what helped me a lot was riding with people that are far better than you. You know what I mean? Because then you're keeping up and you know it is, you get to that those guys that are waiting for you on top of the hill, and as soon as you get there, they start their bikes and they bug off. So your rest time is far less. And then you do it sort of that way. What I uh, what I do if if I don't have anybody to ride with, um, and but I still need to ride, so twice a week I try to ride. Um, then what I do is I go to we got a local place called Wild West, and I go ride laps at Wild West. So, uh, and then I go see how many you know laps I can fit in. So realistically, you riding five hours a day, and um, but it's five hours a day. Um, of, 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 you know, between four to five, uh, four to six hours a day, but it's not in your face all day, every day. So if you can do like five hours, uh, nonstop at a place like Wild West, for honor's sake with us, and I just do these laps and laps and laps and laps and laps, um, it's sort of my go to where I am with my fitness. Um, I don't, unfortunately, I don't do gym. I don't, um, I don't do gym. I used to play soccer, but I don't do that anymore. So, you know, my fitness level is, is basically riding, riding, riding. Um, you know, I am an active guy. I do scuba dive. We hunt, we walk, we, you know, um, I don't, I, I don't really cycle. Um, you know, although I've got a, a mountain bike, I don't really cycle. Um, but I try to keep as active as possible. You know, uh, we work sites, so I'm on site all the time, working up and down, walking up and down, walking up and down flights of stairs. So I am quite active, okay? But my main training comes from riding, 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 and more riding, um, as much riding as possible. Um, so ride with people that are better than you and, and try to keep up. 
Then from there, you're going to have to go online, make a decision as to what class you're going to be doing, and then um, go online, and which is the next part of this, this, this series of videos, and go online and actually register and uh, book um, your entry into the Roof of Africa. So I hope this video helps. Um, I, I, it's a bit of a difficult one because, you know, I, it's it's just difficult. But this is me. This is how I govern it. Um, you know, this is how I look at it. You know, I look at my dollars and I say, okay, I want to be doing at least two two red loops, two to three red loops of my dollars. Um, or it depends on the difficulty of the medallas, uh, the series that we do. So, you know, two red loops and then like sort of um, two blue loops of medallas all within the Saturday. Uh, I try to do that, try to push it um, and, and that. If the medallas is extremely hard, uh, the red loop is extremely hard, that particular uh, uh, event, then I do like one red loop and then I try two or three blue loops. If for whatever reason, uh, a few a few times I've been out to Madalas, um, my family's with me, then I'll do a slow blue loop with them type of thing. I'll do a slow blue loop and then I get back onto the blue loop and I just whack, you know, one or two or three three blue loops just to, to, to see where I am. So these are the, the, the sort of guiding things that I sort of take into play. But again, you know, medallas could be, have an easy loop and you think, oh, well, I did five laps. <laughs> I'm ready, but you're not. Um, or they could have done, uh, uh, they could have a very hard laps and very hard loop. And you, you, you sort of do one red and one blue and you go, oh, you know, shit, I'm, I'm not ready. But meanwhile, you know, you are ready because it's just those loops are much harder. So this is very difficult. But, you know, you also need to feel within yourself. Uh, realistically, five hours a day, two days. Um, and then with the time trial, but the time trial is probably about an hour, hour and a half. So, you know, all in all, you're in for about 12, 13 hours. Um, and, um, and that's where you should be like, you know, sort of like, you know, 12 hours, uh, or 12 hours in two days, um, or five hours a day. And then the next day you start feeling, okay, you feel it. You feel the, the, especially with me, I mean, I'm 53. So I feel the bones and the muscles and the aches and the pains, but, uh, I, I, I'm okay. I'm not dead. It's like, I can go to work on Monday type of thing. It's not like I have to lie in bed. The other thing as well is that expect uninspected, okay, with the roof of Africa. This is a quite a, actually a big point that uh, um, I, I want to make. That's why I've kept it for last. Is that um, first year, uh, first year of roof of Africa, it rained. <laughs> um, yeah, that was that was crazy, you know. And I, we, we last year, you know, we went to the roof of Africa, came around the one corner when we were getting past the Drakensberg. And it was raining and I was like, oh boy, you know, you know, deja vu, it's happening again. Then we got there and there was no rain, everything. And I was like, yes, yes, great stuff. You know, no rain. And then the heat came. Because <laughs> you're like, oh, November, December time and the heat came. And I was like, holy crap, you know. So expect the unexpected, you know. Do the unexpected, you know, step ups, um, Places where you have to get off your bike, push your bike up, do these things, you know, because they definitely coming, um, you know, they definitely will be there. So, so do these things. Don't go, don't go around them. Do you not, know, don't find an easy path out and, and go around it and, and avoid it. You, you have to tackle these things because when you're there, there's realistically, there's sort of no way around it, you know, so tackle the things that scare you, ride with people that are better than you and, um, and just work at it, ride, 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 and, you know, and get get that levels in, and get your eye in, get your confidence in, you know, we will talk about registration, we will talk about bike, we will talk about kit, we will talk about all the rest, so this one is just picking a class, um, I'm babbling a little bit, because it is a difficult one, but I hope this helps, and I hope you can make some heads or tails of it, and see you on the next one.